All right, welcome back. So I just made my review for day one of the TI-10 group stage. So in case you missed anything or you wanted some more information about any of the stuff that happened in day one of the TI-10 group stage, like uh, what the top fantasy picks were, what my uh, favorite matches were, basically the most uh, entertaining and fun and back and forth matches uh, of the day were, as well as some insight on what the meta was like and uh, a little bit of a uh, brief overview of every single game. Uh, feel free to go check that out. Um, as of right now, uh, we are heading into day two of the TI-10 group stage in just a few hours. Uh, of course, the <laughs> uh, day one ended up taking over 12 hours in total to finish because of the delay and because, you know, just naturally a bunch of games, some of them are going to go over time. So uh, we are already close to day two starting. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to be jumping into the schedule. Um, so yeah. Uh, so opposite to day one, where Group A had three series uh, for most of the teams, now it's going to be Group B's turn to have three series for most of the teams. Uh, so starting off with 10 a.m. local time, like I had mentioned before, uh, this is all going to be put in Bucharest time. So if you are from a different time zone, uh, you are going to have to factor in uh, the time zone difference uh, when there. Of course, this is assuming that they actually start the, se uh, the series on time this time, because like I would mentioned, they started the day one an hour and a half late, which was kind of shitty uh, for someone like me who had to stay up until 3 a.m. just to watch it. And then I had to stay up an extra hour and a half all the way to 4.30 in the morning just to start watching. So I, I had stayed up until 4.30 in the morning and I've stayed up since then and I've been awake the whole time. I'm a little bit tired. I watched every single game. Um, I, of course, was only listening to one game at a time, but I was following every single game actively on my monitors. Um, so I'm a, I'm a little bit tired. I'm ready to get some rest before day two. Uh, that's for sure. Um, so yes, uh, 10 a.m. local time. We start with group B, uh, where we have a really, really solid match, actually, starting off in, uh, it, this should be on the A stream. Uh, we have PSG LGD taking on Team Secret. Now, PSG LGD has looked really dominant, and Team Secret is a little bit weird, because we saw a super dominant side of them when they played against Team Spirit, and then we just saw them fold and crumble. Uh, beneath Beast Coast, which is a little bit weird because I think those two teams, uh, Beast Coast and Team Spirit, are kind of on the same level of caliber, um, and it just looked like two completely different Team Secrets from one series to the next, so I'm going to be a little bit interested to see which one we get against PSG LGD. Um, I am anticipating that PSG LGD takes the series just because of how goddamn good they looked, um, but yeah. So we have that. We also have Vici Gaming taking on Elephant, uh, Beast Coast taking on Quincy Crew, and SG Esports playing against Fnatic. Uh, next up, two hours later at noon uh, local time, we then have Group A with OG taking on Aster. OG has had a phenomenal start to the group stage. Um, just uh, no reason to really doubt OG. They have continued to show that they are a TI performer. Uh, VP, another team that has done very well for themselves after day one. Uh, VP takes on T1. Uh, Evil Geniuses take on Alliance and IG takes on Thunder Predator. Of course, Thunder Predator looking for their first one in the group stage. Uh, there are a few teams, luckily, that are tied with them at the very bottom of the group, so they need to be the first one to get ahead. Going back over to the B stream, or to the B group, uh, at 2 p.m. local time, we have Elephant taking on Team Spirit, PSG LGD playing against Fnatic. Uh, we then have, or we then, we, this is all happening at the same time. Uh, we have Vici Gaming playing against Quincy Crew, and SGE Sports playing against Secret. Uh, then, two hours later, jumping over to Group A, uh, we have IG taking on VP. That is going to be a great series. I'm really anticipating watching that one. Uh, Aster versus Alliance, Undying versus Thunder Predator, and OG versus T1. That's going to be another inter interesting one. Of course, T1 had a really rough start uh, to their TI-10 group stage schedule, where they played against some of the toughest teams in the group to start, which is why I think they haven't had a win yet. Uh, they have looked very competitive in their games. They could have taken some wins off of those series, but they didn't. So I'm really hoping they get some wins under their belt because I think they are one of the strongest teams here. They just, again, had an unfortunate start to their schedule. And ending the day at 6 p.m. local time, Team Secret takes on Elephant. Vici Gaming plays against Team Spirit. Uh, Beast Coast plays against SG Esports. So both of the South American teams of Group B playing against each other there. And then Quincy Crew plays against Fnatic. So that's going to do it for day two. Uh, the schedule for day two. Uh, after day one, the standings, which I have already covered in my review, uh, go a little bit like this. In group A, we have Invictus Gaming, Furthers Pro, and OG at the top with five points each. Just underneath that, we have EG with four points and Undying with three points. Uh, Alliance end the day with two points as they win their last series of the day against Thunder Predator. Uh, they go two and four total. And then we have T1, Thunder Predator, and Aster all going 0 and 4 at the bottom of the standings. 
Uh, group B, we have PSG LGD going 4-0. and Again, Group B is going to be the series with most games going on. Uh, so we're going to be seeing a lot of movement in that group in particular. Uh, Elephant and Vici Gaming both go 3-1. and one. Uh, Fnatic, Beast Coast, and Team Secret all go 2-2. Two and two. And then Quincy Crew, SG Esports, and Team Spirit all going, uh, well, SG Esports and Quincy Crew going 0-2 and, two, and uh, Team Spirit going 0-4. So uh, all we have six teams so far that have yet to find a win. Some teams playing more games than, than others. Uh, but regardless, those teams are going to be looking for some wins today. And it's going to be super important if they don't want to be on the chopping block that they get those wins and they get ahead of some of the other teams there. Um, just some extra notes going into today. So like I mentioned, a lot of the teams from Group B are going to be playing three series today, apart from a few. Uh, those being Beast Coast, PSG LGD, and Team Spirit. Uh, they will only be playing two series each from Group B. Um, and in Group A, who uh, most of the teams are playing two series, uh, Evil Geniuses and Undying are only playing one series today. So if you have any um, fantasy cards for anyone from Evil Geniuses or Undying, I would strongly recommend not picking them for today. Uh, just because there's only going to be two, uh, one series, two games, uh, with where those teams are going to be playing. So finally, moving on to fantasy picks. Uh, I had really strongly oriented my fantasy picks over some, uh, just some data and some information that I had been going over for the past few days to try and uh, give you guys the best possible lineup. Uh, of course, this is just my interpretation of all that information, and it's just my opinion. But alas, this is what I ended up going with. So uh, I only picked players from teams that had three series. I know that there are some teams that only have two series tomorrow that have been particularly good at this year's international, namely PSG LGD. Um, but it is just much more, uh, much more beneficial and efficient uh, to take teams that have more games. Uh, they just have more points up for grabs. And since fantasy, point, uh, fantasy picks are changing every day, you really want to make sure that you're optimizing your draft uh, to that specific day. So all my picks are coming from teams that have three series for the day. And then I went through all of those teams because I think there were only six of them. And I kind of went down from which teams I think are going to do best throughout the day. And then if some teams I thought were going to do a little bit worse, maybe one of the players was going to do a little bit better. So uh, for cores, my top two picks uh, were Poyayo from Beachy Gaming and Yoris from Team Elephant. I think these two teams of the teams that have three series tomorrow are on the stronger side. They have sort of a hard schedule. They don't necessarily have the easiest time. Um, but I do think they are top contenders for uh, getting a high amount of points. They did very well for themselves, fantasy-wise, after day one. Um, so yeah, I'm really hoping for uh, a lot of points coming out from them. Uh, other notable picks that I had thought about going for, if I didn't have, um, say for example, if I had a gold version of Yaw uh, Yawar or YS or Batumba Men, and I only had a silver or bronze version of Poyayo and Yuris, my first two picks, then maybe I would have considered taking some of my other lower picks just because the gold one gives my, me some extra stats. But alas, I ended up going with Poyayo and Yuris because those are my highest value cards uh, for me personally. Same thing goes for my mid where I went with Ari, uh, the mid laner for Beachy Gaming. Uh, my other two picks were Somnus and Quinn, but I did not have uh, any gold cards for them, but I did have a gold for Ari. So I went for gold Ori. And finally, for my supports, my top two were Yapsor and DY. Unfortunately, I only have a bronze DY, so I didn't uh, want to pick him. So I ended up going for FY, who I have a gold card of. So even though he was my third pick, I am putting him in just because um, I have a gold version of his card. And I do think he's still one of the uh, one of the top fantasy points producers for this year. Again, I want to iterate, like I had mentioned in my last preview, uh, uh, picking off laners is kind of... Uh, not very optimal just in general uh, carry players have a lot more points up for grabs uh, just as an example um, all of the top corp uh, producers for fantasy points today all finished above 100 fantasy points on the day and the top offlaner the first place offlaner was dm from virtus pro and he only had uh i think it was just beneath 80. Uh, so there is quite a, a, a difference there so i'd strongly recommend not grabbing an offlaner and not grabbing any players that aren't playing three series on the day uh, these are my top picks. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. This is going to do it for my preview. Uh, let me know how you guys did on your first day of fantasy. I did. I think I did pretty okay for myself. I don't think they uploaded uh, the, the leaderboards or anything yet. Uh, I think I finished with just under 500 fantasy points. So uh, not great, but not terrible. So at the end of the day, I'm pretty happy with it. And I, I'm just doing it for fun. So yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. As always, what did you guys think of the first day at Dota? Are you guys excited for the second day? Do you think there's going to be a huge meta shift? Uh, let me know all your thoughts in the comment section down below. As always, 
And yeah, I will see you guys tomorrow with a review of day two of the group stage.